The esterification practical is a practical where alcohols and carboxylic acids are mixed. We normally use a test tube. Um, it's heated over a water bath. We'll discuss later why we use a water bath. Um, watch the video until the end where we have a good discussion about all the different types of questions that come up in this experiment. Your teachers expect you to know quite a lot, not just the synthesis of the reactions. Esterification, the reaction between an uh, organic alcohol and an organic carboxylic acid form esters and water. So it's also re referred to as a condensation reaction because water is formed. This reaction is exothermic. When mixing the alcohol and the carboxylic acid, it does heat up a bit, but we still heat up the reaction test tube over a water bath so that the reaction can proceed faster. <clears throat> so the aim of this experiment is to um, manufacture esters and also to identify the smell of each of the esters. You will most likely be given three experiments to do. I'm going to go through four. The first one we're going to look at is ethanol reacting with ethanoic acid. Ethanol is your alcohol and ethanoic acid is your carboxylic acid. The smell that you will observe is nail polish or um, paint stripper or pear. doesn't really smell that great. The word equation, they can ask you the word equation. They normally ask for the structural chemical equations, which I will go through now. When the alcohol, when you write the alcohol next to the carboxylic acid, when you are learning this work, try to put the functional groups next to each other, obviously with the plus in the middle. The alcohol donates the hydrogen to form the water and the carboxylic acid will give the OH. So there I've indicated the water that is forming. Then all you do is you take the rest of the alcohol, which will have a single bond O, and you attach it to whatever is left over from the carboxylic acid. So all you do is you rewrite that to form your ester. There's the single bond O. It just links the two together. The name of this product is ethyl ethanoate. The ethyl comes from the ethanol. The ethanoate comes from the ethanoic acid. So all esters names are something I'll something O8 and remember the water. Then a balanced chemical equation using molecular formula would look like that. Okay, we're going to look at another one. Methanol reacting with ethanoic acid. So you can try to predict what the name of this ester will be. The first part of the name comes from the alcohol and the second part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid. So the name should be methyl ethanoate. But let's have a look. If you check on the internet, you'll get a list of what all the esters um, smell like. This one doesn't smell great either. It smells like paint. In words, we have the reaction, the word equation, methanol plus ethanoic acid forms methyl ethanoate and water. The structural formula. There's your methyl, one carbon with the OH, write it next to the functional group of your carboxylic acid. The hydrogen from the alcohol bonds to the OH, the hydroxyl from the carboxylic acid. Then to get your ester, you join the O from the alcohol to the rest of the um, carboxylic acid and you get methyl, ethanoate and water. In all these reactions, sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst. And then, sorry, to give you a reaction as a balanced chemical equation just with molecular formula, it is as follows. We're going to do one more of these. Propanol and ethanoic acid, if they react together, try to predict what the name of the ester will be. It would be propyl ethanoate. Now this one smells a bit better, it smells like pears. Again, you do not have to know what each one smells like. There are tables on the internet where you can look them up should you need the smells. In words, again, propanol plus ethanoic acid 
propyl from propanol, ethanoate from ethanoic acid, and remember to always add the water. The structure, I've tried to make it look a little bit more complicated. I've put the functional groups on the outsides to make it a little bit harder. So the H from your alcohol will bond to the OH from your carboxylic acid. Just flip both of them around, get the mirror image of both. Here's your catalyst. This is your propyl. Remember in your ester, the O in the chain always comes from the alcohol. So that O is that O. The name of this is propyl ethanoate and water forms. And there we have the balanced chemical equation, not the structure, just the molecular formula. Now in the next one, we're going to look at a reaction of salicylic acid with methanol. Before we look at the reaction between salicylic acid and methanol, I just want to have a look at the salicylic acid molecule. It consists of a benzene ring. The benzene ring is a hexagonal shaped structure with every second bond being a double bond. On each corner there is a carbon atom with a hydrogen atom. We don't draw those. Often they represent this benzene ring just with a hexagonal and then a circle drawn in the center. So the benzene ring has a hydroxyl attached to it and a carboxyl group which makes it a carboxylic acid. You need, don't need to know this in your syllabus for the normal CAP syllabus, but you, some of your teachers do expect you to use this in an equation with methanol. The IUPAC name is 2-hydroxybenzoic acid because this is carbon number one. The hydroxyl group is on carbon number two. So when we number, we'll start at number one, number two, number three, number four, etc. This is a crystalline solid. It's a crystal so when we do the esterification reaction with salicylic acid, you would add the acid to the test tube first and then pour your methanol um, carefully down the side. The molecular formula, you just add all your carbons together. There are six in the ring and there's another carbon there with a double bond O and the OH attached to it. So there's seven carbons, six hydrogens and three oxygens in the salicylic acid molecule. Now we're going to look at the reaction of methanol with salicylic acid. Methanol is your alcohol and salicylic acid is your carboxylic acid. The ester that forms has a smell called wintergreen and products that smell like that are the muscle rubs, for example, deep heat. Is the reaction in words, methanol plus salicylic acid forms methyl salicylate and water. Is a structural formula reaction is given here. The H from the alcohol bonds to the OH from the carboxylic acid to form the water. And then just as in all your other reactions, you just join the rest of your alcohol with the rest of your carboxylic acid. That is the molecule for methyl salicylate and there is the water. Take, a take your time and study this reaction to make sure that you understand what has happened here. Then I've given the reaction with molecular formula. You can write salicylic acid like that or the shortened version and your methyl salicylate can be written like that or the shortened version. A few questions might come up on your prac sheet that you would need to answer with regards to this experiment. For example, what is the function of the sulfuric acid? It is used as a catalyst and a second function, it is a dehydrating agent. Then, the reason for the water bath. Why do we put the test tube with a reaction mixture in a water bath? Because many organic compounds are flammable, especially the alcohols, and they should not be left or used near an open flame, so it's for safety. You may be asked why is a wire gauze used under the beaker with the water bath when you are using a Bunsen burner. The wire gauze is to distribute the heat evenly. I haven't put that in the, in the notes here. And then you guys are often told to use wet cotton wool or wet paper or wet paper towel around the upper part of the test tube. 
That is to cause the evaporated reactants, the alcohol and the carboxylic acid, to cool down and condense back into the reaction test tube. Besides using the water bath, there are a few other safety measures that we need to take with this reaction. Acids are toxic and corrosive, so always use gloves and safety goggles and keep all valuable um, clothing like your blazers, your ties, everything far away from the reaction. And then when you do need to um, smell, waft the odors toward you with your hand. You never put your nose over a test tube because breathing in these dangerous gases can lead to poisoning or respiratory problems. Another question that you may be asked when filling in your prac sheet is why do esters with higher molecular masses not have fragrances? The higher the molecular mass or the larger the molecule, the stronger the intermolecular forces between the molecules. Therefore, more energy is needed to break these bonds. Therefore, they will have higher boiling points and lower vapor pressures. These molecules won't evaporate easily, so you will not detect any smells or odors. When doing this practical, you will often be asked to add the ester to a sodium carbonate solution. After your ester has been prepared, wait for it to cool down slightly and then you add it to the sodium carbonate solution. When you do this, you will notice fizzing. This is due to the carbon dioxide forming between the unreacted acid in the test tube with the sodium carbonate solution. The ester will float on top of the sodium carbonate solution and it has an oily appearance. You can notice the difference between the two layers. Then lastly, there are two questions that you are sometimes asked. Use the internet to investigate these two questions. They will ask you where are esters used in different industries. Think of food industry, pharmaceutical industry, perfume industry, etc. And those you must look up. And then they're also often asked, how do animals use esters?